At the end of the day, when it comes to professional business valuation, there are really three main approaches. We're going to go through each of those three with you right now. So working from left to right, we've got a cost approach. Then you've got a form of relative valuation known as a market approach. And finally, you've got an intrinsic form of valuation known as a discounted cash flow analysis. When it comes to the cost approach, there are two different methods. One is looking at what the cost to build something was. For example, say you were going to buy a company that had a manufacturing facility. How much has been invested in building that facility and what was the total cost of it? Another approach is to look at the replacement cost. It's one thing to look at how much it cost to build something, but that may have been a long time ago. And inflation as well as changes in technology may mean that the replacement cost today is dramatically different than what the cost to build originally was. When looking at valuation, the cost approach can be useful because it's sort of like an opportunity cost. If I was looking to acquire a company, I could just pay for that business that's already operating or build it myself. Let's look at the market approach, a form of relative valuation. With this approach, we look at what other companies or other assets are worth and use them as a proxy for what we're trying to value. The first method is to look at comparable companies that are publicly traded. They're relatively easy to find because these companies' shares trade on exchange. They're publicly invested, so we can view their price at any time. And then we can determine what other investors are willing to pay for that company. If they're similar to the one we're trying to value, then we can use ratios to figure out what that company we're trying to value is worth based on its revenue, or its EBITDA, or its earnings, or some metric like that. The other way to use the market approach is to look at precedent transactions. Precedent transactions mean past mergers and acquisitions, where we can see how much an acquiring company paid for a business. This form of valuation includes a takeover premium, so generally more money is paid for a control position Taken together, these two forms of market valuation can provide a good overview of what a company might be worth relative to other companies. And then finally, on the right here, we have discounted cash flow analysis, which is a form of intrinsic value. Intrinsic value means that we look at the company in isolation. We don't look at what other companies are worth. We don't look at the cost approach to see how much has already been invested. Instead, what we do is we forecast the future performance of the business out typically about five years, then assume a sale of the company or a perpetual growth rate to give us a terminal value. This constitutes the forecast. That forecast is then discounted back to today using a discount rate, typically the weighted average cost of capital, Then that lets us arrive at the net present value of the business. So as you can see, this form of valuation only looks internally at the company, makes assumptions about what the future of the company will look like, and discounts all of those cash flows back to today. In this course, we're going to focus on the three main types of valuation that are most common in corporate finance. Those include public company comparables, precedent transactions, and discounted cash flow analysis. Here's a football field chart. This is often created by investment banking, corporate development, and equity research professionals when summarizing the valuation methods that they've used to come up with a value for a business. So as you can see across the bottom axis of this chart, there are several different valuation methods used. Comparable company analysis, which is comps, precedent transactions, discounted cash flow with two different cases, and the current trading price of the stock over a year with its 52-week high and low. So we've labeled the two methods on the left as being the relative valuation techniques. The two DCF valuation cases represent the intrinsic value ranges for this company. And on the far right side of the graph, we have the 52-week high and low trading prices of the stock. This is observed for a publicly traded company. Now, 
the job of evaluation analyst or professional is to step back and look at this and weigh the different methods, the comps, the DCF, the upside and the downside, and triangulate on some type of value that they think makes the most sense. So it's not just about arriving at one number. It's about arriving at a range of values and then the art of deciding where within that range of values you believe the actual value of this business lies.